JSON or JSON is a shorthand way of saying JavaScript object notation. It's a way to store and send data in a format that is both easy to read and easy for computers to understand. Even though JavaScript is in the name, JSON is not limited to JavaScript. It works with almost every programming language, including Python, Java, and PHP. Think of JSON as a simplified way to represent data. For example, if you want to store information about a person, you could write it like this. First, let's start with curly braces. In JSON, curly braces are used to define an object. Everything inside the curly braces represents key value pairs that store data. For example, here, name is the key and Jake is the value. In JSON, keys are always enclosed in double quotes and string values should also be enclosed in double quotes. Then we add the second key value pair. The key is age and the value is 25. Unlike string values, numbers in JSON do not need to be enclosed in quotes. This allows JSON to differentiate between text and numerical data. Now for the third key value pair. Here, hobbies is the key and the value is an array. In JSON, arrays are enclosed in square brackets and can contain multiple values separated by commas. The values inside this array are swimming and basketball, both of which are strings and must be enclosed in double quotes. Each key value pair is separated by a comma, except for the last one. The JSON structure remains enclosed within curly braces to complete the object. This structure allows us to represent multiple types of data, including strings, numbers, and arrays, in a structured format. For this to truly be a JSON file, we need to change the file extension to .json. This ensures that the file is recognized as a JSON document and can be properly interpreted by programs that read JSON data. Now that we understand how JSON structures data, let's explore how JSON objects can be even more powerful by nesting data within them. For example, the address key holds an object as its value, containing three properties, street, city, and zip. This nesting allows us to structure related information neatly. In JSON, an object can contain another object as a value. This is done by defining a key and assigning an entire object as its value. This approach is useful when we need to represent structured data with multiple levels. Here, the address object contains another nested object, coordinates, which stores latitude and longitude values. This deep nesting is useful for representing structured information, such as geographical data, but why is nesting in JSON powerful? JSON naturally represents relationships between data in a hierarchical manner, making it ideal for real-world applications like user profiles, product catalogs, and API responses. Instead of using multiple separate objects, JSON allows for improved organization by nesting related information together, enhancing readability, and maintaining a clear structure. Many APIs use nested JSON structures to return complex data. For instance, a user profile response from a web service might look like this. This JSON object represents a user with nested data for contact information and preferences. This structure makes it easy to access and manage different levels of information efficiently. Now that you know what JSON is and how it works, the next step is accessing JSON data. JSON is just text, so you need a programming language to read and manipulate it. Let's go over how this works using JavaScript and Python, two of the most common languages that deal with JSON. For example, Let's say we are accessing a product details JSON, which contains information about a laptop, including its name, brand, price, and specifications. The JSON data might look like this. We have a product name, brand, price, and an object containing specifications. In JavaScript, to easily access the data we want, we need to convert the JSON into an object. This is typically done using the JSON parse method. If we are fetching data using fetch, we can convert the response to JSON immediately using .json function. To retrieve the data, we can use dot notation or bracket notation. For example, if we want to retrieve the product name, we can simply type product.product name or product square bracket and then double quote product name. This will return the data we want using dot notation or bracket notation. If we also need to access nested data, such as the storage within the specs object, we can type product.specs and then dot storage or product square bracket, and then specs with a double quotation, and then square bracket, and then with storage as its value. While in Python, we can work with JSON data by parsing it into a dictionary using the JSON module. This allows us to access and manipulate the data just like a normal Python dictionary. Now, instead of using JSON parse, we use JSON loads. In both languages, once the JSON is parsed into an object in JavaScript, or a dictionary in Python. You can access the data using the respective notation systems, dot notation or bracket notation in JavaScript, 
and bracket notation in Python. And I know we've discussed a lot of concepts today, which is why we've made a PDF version of this video. It's free, but we would really appreciate any support you give to the channel. Mastering these techniques will allow you to efficiently handle and manipulate JSON data, making it easier to work with APIs, databases, and configuration files while keeping your code clean and maintainable. We will continue discussing many interesting topics like this on our channel, so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. Well, that's it for now, Novus. Thank you for watching.